In this video, I want to talk about all the reasons why you would not want to stake your Ethereum cryptocurrency in Ethereum 2.0. This new and improved version of Ethereum is no doubt like one of the biggest leaps forward for blockchain technology in a long time. And there are lots of reasons why you might want to participate in this new endeavor, you know, stake your Ethereum cryptocurrency and earn passive income on Ethereum 2.0. But there are also lots of reasons why you might not want to. And I'm not necessarily here to persuade you one way or the other. I simply want to make this video as a blockchain developer who works with the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis to talk about the counterpoints, all the things you need to consider before you decide to do something like this so that you can make you know, the best informed decision that you can. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So Ethereum 2.0 is one of the biggest advancements in blockchain technology in a long time. All right, this is the transition to the new and improved version of Ethereum that gets the blockchain ready for prime time to make it really fast, scalable, all that kind of stuff. One of the biggest changes to this is migrating from proof of work to proof of stake. This basically means that Ethereum is going to move away from mining like Bitcoin to staking. This is going to be the primary way that the blockchain becomes secure, which basically means people take their cryptocurrency, they lock it up to become a validator and earn a passive income reward for doing this. All right. And this reward can range from, you know, uh, 21%, you know, down to 5%, depending on how many people stake. So this is, of course, really attractive uh, to get this extra return on top of your ETH, especially if the price keeps going up. But here are the things you need to think about before you decide to do that. So the first thing to think about is once you make the transition, there's no coming back until at least until you exit phase zero. So let me explain what I mean by that. So the Ethereum 2.0 transition is basically setting up a brand new blockchain called the Beacon Chain. That's where we are with the process right now because Ethereum 2.0 is gonna roll out multiple phases. We're in phase zero right now. We set up a brand new blockchain in parallel to Ethereum 1.0, which we're all using. And in order to become a validator and to stake, you have to move your ETH from ETH1 over to ETH2 to the beacon chain. And right now, since we're in phase zero, you can't withdraw that ETH and you can't withdraw your staking rewards until we get out of this phase. So that presents a few different problems, okay? So what if the Ethereum price goes up like crazy and you want to take some profit? Well, you can't really do that because all your ETH is locked in the beacon chain. Now, for some people, this is fine because, you know, the 32 ETH that they want to stake, they believe in the asset for the long term. They're never going to sell. And so they're willing to risk this, move it to the beacon chain because they don't care how long it takes and they don't need to ever touch that money. But for a lot of people, if they're able to save up enough to buy 32 ETH and the price goes up like 10x, then that would be an attractive price point for them to sell some of it. But they can't do it if it's all locked into the beacon chain. So you need to have really strong conviction that you're going to hold on this for the long term before you decide to do that. So another big thing to think about is if it's all locked up and the price totally tanks, then the return that you're getting is not really helping you that much, right? Because if the ETH price is going down and you're earning like, let's say 15% on top of it, then sure that's helping mitigate your loss a little bit. But if the better alternative is for you to just take your ETH and sell it, then you don't care quite as much about that extra percentage that you're getting. So another thing you need to think about before you do this are the actual returns, okay? So you may see like a 15 percent return, you know, advertised, but you have to consider a few other things. All right. You have to think about your time and then the cost of running a validator. Okay. Because don't forget, if you're going to become a validator on the Ethereum network, you have to run a validator node, which requires hardware, requires electricity, it requires maintenance. And so I'll talk about those things right now. So the first thing I think about is, you know, time, because it's going to take some time for you to set up a validator node. All right. Especially if you don't have strong technical skills, you have to overcome that hump before you set this thing up. All right. So so if you want to see how to do that, you can, of course, walk through the uh, setup guide here on launchpad.ethereum.org, go through all these steps to set up your node. And if you're new to this process, this is going to take a while for you to make sure that you've got it. It's secure. All right. Because don't forget, you're going to be sending 32 Ether to this thing on a brand new blockchain in order to become a validator. So it basically has to be airtight. You have to make sure everything's perfect so that you don't completely lose all your money because that's a risk with this thing is it could all go to zero if you mess something up, if you get hacked or any of that kind of stuff. The other big factor is that this is going to take your time and maintenance. All right. So at some point, you're probably going to have to upgrade your validator node. You're going to have to kind of babysit a little bit and monitor it to make sure that it's not down because that's one of the big things about being 
being an Ethereum validator is if your validator is ever offline, then you can get slashed, which basically means you'll be penalized. You'll lose money. So there will be some active maintenance involved in getting these returns. And so even if you're not spending the time actually working on it, there's still going to be some sort of mental bandwidth that's occupied <laughs> where you're always sort of like, I hope this thing's working. So you need to think about that when you're talking about the amount of time that it's going to take in order to get those returns and factor that in when you're talking about the actual passive income reward that you're getting uh, for staking. Another thing to think about when you're talking about the profitability is the hardware costs, okay? Because when you're going to run a validator node, you have to provide the hardware some way or basically rent it, okay? So there's some different options here. Uh, you know, you can use a computer that you already have, let's say uh, a spare computer, because you don't want to use your main computer, because again, this thing needs to be on all the time. So maybe you have to have a spare computer in order to do this. That might be like, you know, kind of free, or I guess already paid for, you don't have to have an additional expense. But if you don't have a spare computer or the, the specs aren't up to the required minimums, then you're going to need to purchase a new one, okay? So a new computer could cost anywhere from hundreds of dollars to thousands of dollars, depending on what it is. So if you get a pre-built computer can be more expensive. If you build your own, it'll be cheaper, but it'll also take your time to do that. If you run your own computer in your home or on an office, for example, you're going to have additional costs of like an uninterrupted power supply because you don't want this thing to ever go down. So you need a battery backup. You probably want some sort of backup internet connection in case your primary internet service goes down. So these are definitely additional costs you have to think about. So let's say you don't want to go that route and you want to do it on a server, maybe one that you rent. Well, you have to factor that in because that's a cost that never really goes away. You never like pay your server off. You have to continuously rent it forever. And so you have to factor that cost in when you're talking about the actual returns that you're getting from staking. All right, so the last big thing you need to think about is the security. Because basically, if your node gets hacked, then you can lose all your money. Essentially, if somebody gets access to whatever computer you run your node on, then uh, they can compromise your funds, all right? So you need to take extra measures to make sure that this is totally secure. So the, the bad thing is a lot of people don't necessarily have these skills, even if they're already developers, because, you know, the types of skills that are required to run an Ethereum node are like DevOps skills. So a lot of people are just, you know, application developers or, you know, something like that. And they're not quite as strong in this other area when you're talking about like system administration and making sure that things are completely secure so that no one else can like tamper with their setup. So that's okay if that's you. I mean, that's a lot of my background. I don't have a super, super, super strong DevOps background. I know enough to pull something like this off, but there's lots of people where this is just not their forte. And it's something you need to be honest with yourself about before you decide to set Set up uh, a node like this where a significant amount of money can be compromised if you overlook something in regards to the security. And so that's definitely a huge way that you could lose all your money. All right. So there are other ways you, your funds can be compromised. So again, you know, when you're walking through the setup steps for your validator node, you have to move cryptocurrency around in order to get it on your validator before it gets activated. Okay. You know, if you're not super comfortable, like sending cryptocurrency around in a development environment, then, you know, you could potentially botch a transaction, send it to the wrong place, and then your ETH could be stuck or basically just lost forever. And so that's another way you could just lose your money. And you need to really think about that before you decide to set up your own validator node to stake your ETH in Ethereum 2.0. So those are my thoughts on why you might not want to stake in Ethereum 2.0, okay? So like I said before, you know, I'm not here to persuade you one way or the other. I just want to lay out all the pros and all the cons so that you can make the most informed decision as possible, all right? So I hope you like this video. As always, you know, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. It really helps these videos out so that more people can find them and learn about blockchain. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain developer, uh, then how can you do that? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free for you. And you know, if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, then I can show you how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right. Just sign up with the link down below to get started today. All right. That's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.